Hi, my name is Brett Anderson, and this is presentation two, the whistleblower presentation. We're going to be talking about whistleblowing within a company, what if you discover fraud, the six steps to take, when to know when to blow the whistle, and also an example of someone who did become a whistleblower within a company that he was a part or that he was in. So how to blow the whistle. Number one, of course, is to approach your manager. Most companies have a policy and a chain of command, so to speak, that requires that you go through your direct manager or supervisor to, with any issues or problems that you might have. Now, of course, there's six steps for a reason, and that's often because generally when there is a fraud or something that you as an employee might detect, it's generally through a manager or at a manager's request for you to cook the books, inflate earnings a little, whatever it might be. Generally, it is a manager is probably going to ask you to do that. And so, of course, you should go to the manager first, try to work things out, but if they're not willing to cooperate, then you go to step two, which in this case is talk, discuss the issue with your family. Now, the significance about this issue is that when it comes to whistleblowing, this is a very, very stressful thing to have happen or something that's a process to go through. And it can cause you a lot of grief, a lot of stress, a lot of problems. And it also could end up resulting in you being fired from a company if they retaliate and so your family needs to be aware that some things could be changing and the reasons why you may be stressed and so that's the significance about number two it's also the start of documenting the, your experience and becoming a whistleblower which is something important to have in any real circumstance or anything you do you should have proper documentation to back you up and also have evidence for what you're trying to uncover whatever fraud that might be so three it says take it to the next level that can take a couple of forms, but the main one is essentially go to your boss's boss or the next manager up. So if your manager is not working with you, you go to your next manager and you discuss things with them and try to resolve the issue that way. If that doesn't work and your company has an ethics officer or an ethics department, then you contact them because nowadays it's probably going to be more likely that a company will have an ethics department back in the day was not the case. And, so, and I imagine in a lot of cases, it's still not the way that it's going to be organized. But if you have an ethics department, go to them, discuss what's going on, try to get somebody on your side to help you out. If that doesn't work or you don't have that option, five, consider going outside your chain of command. So this is where you're gonna have to put company policy aside because for the greater good of the company or the greater good of society, which means to Go straight to the CEO or to the executive managers directly over the heads of your manager and get them involved and aware of what's going on. And if it turns out you've got a kid in lay on your hands and he doesn't want to work with you, then you go outside the company. And that means going to the SEC or State Department whose sole purpose is to be able to make sure that fraud does not happen or is able to be prosecuted. And then number seven, to protect yourself. If you have exhausted all of your other options, get out of the company. Leave that sinking ship because there's no reason why you should go down with a floundering giant. So I want to talk about Harry Margopoulos. He was in an investment firm and different from a traditional whistleblower, he was requested by management in his company to find out how Bernard Madoff was actually having so much success. He was a math whiz, as they called him and was tasked with figuring out how this guy was being so successful no matter what. And so he took in all the data they could try and ran the calculations and found that he could not replicate the success Bernoff Madoff was having. And so he knew it was impossible what he was doing and said, nobody's that good, nobody can have that much success. And so he went straight to step six, which is go outside the company, because it wasn't his company committing the fraud, it was another one. And he taught, contacted the SEC and also media and reporters and they ignored him they ignored him for nearly 10 years but he was persistent as you can see and he was an unsung hero at the time even though he left the investment firm he was with he continued his best to try to get Bernie Madoff out there so that the SEC knew what was going on and they finally investigated him and found he was committing fraud but at that point it was too late though Harry was ethical and did the best he could he persisted and was a true unsung hero, and that is my presentation.